So here we have a wigwam. Which way should we go? from one individual been discovered. So this is not even a megalodon. This is a megatooth shark, the 42-foot ancestor of the great white shark. And it had serrated teeth just like the rest of them. Here's its historical distribution. It'd be nice if they said what time period the historical distribution was in. But if you come around here, you can see it. Look at that. Look at all those teeth. So the, yeah, the jaw is not as big, like, for reference. <laughs> There's for reference. But the jaw is not quite as big um, as a megalodon jaw, which I've seen several replicas of. But you can see down here, these are the teeth that a lucky woman named Becky Hine discovered. And you can see how big they are. They're, they're probably about the size of my hand. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, I look it. Look at the size of this guy. This guy, oh my gosh, and there's like perspective on my hand. This is a giant sloth, you guys, and he is truly enormous. And what's really interesting is they were kind of recent. Only 10,000 years ago did they really start to disappear. And you can see like, here's his claw. Here's my hand. <laughs> there's my little claws compared to it. But oh my gosh, so giant ground sloths. Oh, we're going to have to come back and do a really detailed specimen Saturday on you, my friend. And this will be a giant walking stick. And he is actually eating that leaf back there. He is very, very cool. This is another future specimen Saturday for sure, especially on the days when it's a little quieter. Oh, darling, there's a baby one on the little roof. They're so tiny. And then there's, there's these huge ones. And there he is eating a leaf. So giant walking stick. Indo Pacific. Do, do, do. Motionless during the day. Acts like a dead leaf all day at sunset. The stick is often walking. It climbs the canopy and explores the nightlife. So do you see him eating right here, darling? And then look way up, straight up, and there's like a baby. Aww. Do you see the baby? The baby's cute. I like him. Look at you, you're so cute. And these would be the harmless black rat snakes. And as you can see, they are not always just black. We have a yellowy one right here. And you can see this one has been burrowing quite actively, so it's still got soil all over its head. But these are the black rat snakes, which we actually talked about in season one, if you guys remember that, when we built a black rat snake exhibit for our black rat snakes from Attata and Kate, and if I remember correctly. And they are among the state's largest, growing more than seven feet to two subspecies of North Carolina. The black rat snake was once called the pilot black snake because it appeared to lead rattlesnakes and copperheads to and from their shared dens where they overwinter. It's non-venomous and egg layer, and here's about how big it grows in inches. And it's just, oh, there's so many snakes. I can't wait to come back and show you guys all of them in more detail. So we're still in the taxidermy section, and we have just discovered the two-toed Amphithuma, and it gets its name from the two toes on each of its tiny legs. It can grow up to three feet long, and it can bite, and it has the largest red blood cells of any animal. It's also in the dis our, like, our distribution area, but look at him! Isn't that just the most interesting looking little thing? I love that! I have never seen one of these around here. I don't even know where you would have to go to find one. But apparently they're in our geographic range, so maybe in future expeditions I'll keep an eye out for them. This is another exciting find. This is actually a taxidermy model of the pileated, or pileated, pileated? Yeah, woodpecker. And this is the guy we keep seeing off the back of our deck. And they're supposed to be very shy, very uncommon, but this is for sure the, the bird that we keep seeing, the woodpecker, off the back of our own deck. So it's very exciting to know we live somewhere where one of these guys can constantly be found. Look at the size of him. He's huge. Like, here's my hand for reference. He's very, very big, but they can be found uh, in our area year-round, and they feed primarily on carpenter ants. So it's going to be very exciting to try to get some more living footage of these guys for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very exciting, very special Expedition Sunday. So this happened earlier this week. We went to the North Carolina Natural History Museum with Darling and his family, and it was absolutely fantastic. I loved 
every single moment of it. You guys can imagine I was just like a kid in a candy store. I was running around. I wanted to see everything. And at the same time, I could hardly bring myself to leave any of the exhibits because there was just so much to see and take in. And I was truly deeply blown away by the scale and the detail and the educational opportunities put into the North Carolina Natural History Museum. And it's free. You just have to like find a good place to park. And that might be like park fee but that's it and it was fantastic you guys can see from these clips and you can probably hear it in my voice in the earlier clips that I was just beside myself with excitement we saw so many things you guys will see a clip of the passenger pigeon a taxidermy piece of a passenger pigeon which is now an extinct species uh, in in these clips and we saw all of the snakes that are native to North Carolina we saw insects and matamata -mata from around the world we saw hummingbird taxidermy pieces from around the world we saw amazing fossils I've actually held back a bit of the footage and we're going to go back this this was kind of our survey day where it was really busy. We were with a big group. We had so many small children around us, which is fantastic because that means that these kids will hopefully grow up just like the rest of us with a bit of a spark of passion and curiosity and excitement about the natural world. I was really excited to see the kids around, but it did make it very hard to record. So I definitely know we will be going back to this museum all the time and I will hopefully be able to do interviews with the scientists there. They have entire labs that are open so you can see as the science is conducted you can see what's going on. Um, oh my goodness they have hands-on activities. Basically it's just like where I used to work and I fell in love with it and I can't wait to open up some of the beauty and some of the detail and some of the educational opportunities that are just like hiding right here in this museum for everybody worldwide in our community and it was fantastic and i know you guys love some of the things that have been uh featured already in this little clip just to give you a sampling of things that we're going to be looking at up close the giant sloth fossil for example we have some fossils native to north carolina of the Cornosaurus? I'm gonna say it horribly wrong. We just call him Acro or Acco. Um, the T-Rex cousin basically, like a distant cousin of the T-Rex who has like a much differently shaped jaw, bigger bones, smaller body overall, native to North Carolina. North Carolina has stunning beautiful coastal ocean and beaches and it has the sea turtles and sharks and megalodon teeth and then you can go up through the Piedmont area where there's endangered sun dews and endangered pitcher plants and keep going on up so that you're in the mountains with some exclusive mountain going species and there's just so much to show off just in this one state and I cannot wait to go back again and again and to travel more and see it hands-on in person and be able to share all of these things with you and bring some more of the wonders of the natural world right here to you guys, to our community, so we can all appreciate and admire it together. And I can't wait to do more of that. So I know this is kind of an interesting little collage for an expedition Sunday, but consider it just a bit of a taste like of what the future will hold. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. Remember everybody, stay curious.